Today we're going to make pine needle tea. And I'm getting ready to make a cup of the pine needle tea that we just brought in. You want to wash your pine needles off and then you want to break them off at the bottom and take out the little bitty little brown thing, little brown sheet that they have at the bottom so make sure you don't have that either. And if there's any brown parts just take those off. Okay, there's some brown parts on this one. And then you want to cut them to about half inch or a quarter inch or so, little pieces. Now if you're out in the wild and, you're, and you need some vitamin C and you're out, you're not going to have a tea ball or you're going to have a tea bag. I'm just doing it because of convenience because if I would just put the um, greens in there, they, it's hard to get them all out. They do float and it's hard, you'll still be getting them in your mouth. So when I do make this, I'll go ahead and put it in a, one of these, you know, chlorine free biodegradable bags or um, a tea ball. So you want to put it in there. Generally it's about a, t a, a tablespoon per cup. And these are big cups, so I'm going to go a couple tablespoons probably in there. Okay. Then I'm going to close it up. And I already put some in here. And then you're going to put your, I boiled the water and then I took the teapot off so I just let the, the water cool just a teeny bit. Just like I'd be making regular tea. And then I'm going to let it steep for a few minutes and then we could put honey, you could cut up some ginger, put some lemon in it, whatever sounds good, and then drink up. Some of the pine needle tea that Stacy made for us, uh, we took the pine needles obviously right off the back uh, porch here off the property and um, we made the tea, we showed you how to do that. And we just want to encourage you guys that anytime you're watching our remedies or us foraging for food, that you familiarize yourself with what we're talking about so you know how to identify um, the, the, the different types of natural um, habitat that we're showing you and sharing with you So because we don't want anyone to get sick, okay? So. Yeah, there's three types of the pine type trees or conifers that are poisonous. Um, the first one is a yew, like a yew, the ones that have the little red berries. Um, that you might have a decoration around your house. Landscaping, yeah. Yeah, um, another one is the Norfolk pine. They call it that, like in a Hawaiian Christmas tree, the Norfolk pine. You know, that's toxic to animals too. And then the third one is called a ponderosa pine or a yellow pine. So those are the three that are toxic. Pretty much all the other ones are pretty good. Yeah. You know, you can do, you know, there's spruces, there's, there's different ones like that. A lot of times people like to mix and match the flavors. This one's the white pine, um, and it's just a nice, you know, wouldn't you say just nice, smooth? It's smooth. Yeah, yeah, smooth taste. It's not bad so at all. So why would we even drink pine needle tea? Well, who are the first people, well, around, you hear about, <laughs> to, to drink the pine needle tea? It's been around for, you know, Long thousands time. of years. Yeah, cultures have people been doing make tea it. out of a ton of different things. We're, you know, we're so used to probably just getting our little tea bags or whatever, but there's lots of things you can make tea from, just like coffee you can make. Chicory coffee, which is a wildflower that grows all along the roads and everything around here. Yeah, so the, it's just wonderful because it is loaded in vitamin C. It's four to five times higher vitamin C than like fresh squeezed orange juice or lemons. Oh, so that's why the settlers used to drink it during the winter to fight off scurvy. Right, and that's how they made it through when they first settled here in America. But all over, I mean, cultures have been doing it forever to help with that because, you know, if you don't get vitamin C, you'll get very sick. Right. Because your vitamin C is so important for strengthening your immune system to help prevent from colds and flus. And the other good thing about them, with if you do get colds and flus, it's a good mucus fighter and it's like an expectorant, so it thins the mucus. 
and it's very good when it comes to that. So if you feel like you're going to be getting sick, then uh, maybe, you know, do two, three cups of this a day. You could even, you know, brew it up and then sweeten it and then put it in the refrigerator and then use it. Make it like an iced tea? Yeah. And also sure. while you're doing that, if you're not feeling well, then you drop some of that elderberry under your tongue. Yeah, you can link you that up there too. You got the one-two punch. That's right. And, uh, but besides being great for the immune system, it does, a, you know, a lot of different things. You know, it helps with, like, um, producing more red blood cells. And red blood cells in your body help to give you oxygen. So with your circulation, um, it'll help. It's anti-tumor, antidepressant, just with your mood. Um, it's just great. Vitamin A, it's very high in helping with your skin and your hair and your nails. And a good one, especially as we age too, is your eyesight. Um, helping with um, strengthening into the eyes, macular degeneration, um, cataract formation, because vitamin C is very important in that. So vitamin A and C are just two big ones that we just love. So cool. That's why, you know, we, we don't drink it every day, but it's something that, you know, I know it's there. You know, we have tea, and I like to change up the kind of tea that we have throughout the day, and sometimes you get bored of one. So this is good to implement, especially throughout the winter months, because right. vitamin C is so important in the human body. That's right. Now, a couple things. Um, if you are pregnant, um, it's not recommended to drink the pine needle tea because it could possibly cause a miscarriage. And I know a lot of people do herbal rem remedies on their animals. Right. I wouldn't do it on any um, lactating or pregnant animals either right. because that could cause a miscarriage. Yeah. Right. So cool. Yeah. So just a little quick video we'll share with you guys on some of our herbal remedies that we do here on the homestead. Um, if you got any questions, leave them in the comment section below. You can also follow us on Instagram or Twitter. And also our uh, blog spot where we're trying to get together. We have a web page and we're trying to turn that into our blog spot so we can share some of this stuff with you guys. And um, that's it. You got anything else? I don't think so. I think that's it. Cool. This is Off Good with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And I'm Stacy. And we'll catch you guys on the next episode. See ya. Yeah, the other one. Your bigger breed. So what about that little white umbilical cord?